ladies and gentlemen, if I was asking you to graph this, um, the one way that we learned two class periods ago was to basically complete the squared. If you guys remember, that was four steps. I, wrote, I gave you, wrote down two examples, right? I gave you like four, four, um, four steps to follow. You group the first two terms, factor out your um, constant, so therefore negative, so therefore a is one. Then you do your b divided by two squared. You add it inside the parentheses, add it out, subtract it outside the parentheses, factor it, and then you got it in vertex form, and then you know what the vertex is, right? Does everybody kind of remember that kind of a little bit? If you have questions with completing the square, please come and see me. However, as you mentioned, you don't always have to go and complete the square. You could definitely do this problem by completing the square. However, last homework, what I wanted to do is rather than focus on completing the square, what was to use, um, use the standard form. And there's a formula for the axis of symmetry when it's in, for when it's in standard form. We like, ax we like vertex and axis symmetry when it's in vertex form because it's just h and k, right? But it would when standard form, you have to use x equals opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So in this case, my b is going to be 18. So opposite of b is going to be negative 18 divided by 2 times negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 18 divided by negative 2 is 9. Just remember, x equals 9. That is going to be my axis symmetry. So if I was going to graph this, actually, let's do this over here. If I was going to graph this, I would go ahead and just create a nice axis. I know you guys didn't have to graph this problem, but I'm just going to show you how to do it because for number, what, 10 and like 5 or 4, you guys had to do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So at 9, who keeps on stealing all my markers? So at 9, we create this nice little axis of symmetry. OK? Um, now, um, what we need to do is now identify the vertex. And there's a formula for the vertex, which I gave you. The formula for the vertex might not make a lot of sense because we're talking about an equation. But the formula for the vertex was opposite of b divided by 2a, comma, f of opposite of b divided by 2a. And basically, that's for function notation. And they took out, dis they took out teaching functions um, for you guys. So we didn't really get to explain functions. So this might be a little bit more confusing. So to explain it, I'm going to use a table of values. The main important thing I want you guys to understand is the vertex, which is either the max or the min, lies on this graph. So we know that x equals 9 is my axis symmetry. That's going to be the same coordinate, of the x coordinate of my vertex. So rather than looking at that f stuff, which I uh, want you guys to understand, notice that f of x, which represents a function, would be the same output as the y. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. However, if I know the x coordinate, right? do you guys see how that, that is right there? Yes? The axis symmetry is the x coordinate of the vertex. So therefore, if I was doing a table of values, and I know what the x value is of the vertex, what do I need to do to, plug the, to find the y value? You plug it in. You plug x in for x right there. So basically, what they're saying is, instead of using a y, we're using f of x. And basically, when you plug it in in function notation, it just looks like this. It just means you're replacing x with, what, with 9. So let's go and plug it in. Negative 9 squared plus 18 times 9 minus 75. So all you do is you plug in x to find out what your y coordinate is, or in this case, your f of 9. All right? Does everybody make sense? I don't want to confuse you because we didn't talk about functions. So, but basically, find the axis symmetry, plug it in, and find y. So when we get this, we have 9 squared is 81 times negative 1 is negative 81. 9 times 18, that's going to be 90. 9 times 8 is 72. So it would be 162. You can see that that's half of that. So technically, I have a positive 81, right? And so then minus 75 is going to give me a negative 6, right? I think I did my math in my head correct? Positive 6, you're right. Thank you. So my vertex is at 9, comma 6. So I go back over here. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So for your homework, that's all you guys had to do, was just tell me what the vertex was and what the axis of symmetry was. That's all you guys had to do for that problem. All right. 
Um, however, let's go a little bit deeper, because for other problems, you had to do more information. Does the graph open up, or does the graph open down? Kate Delaray. Don't listen to other people. They could be wrong. Well, don't always go opposite. I wasn't trying to trick you. What, what determines if it goes up or down? A, B, or C? A. So in this case, A is what? Negative. negative. Do you remember if A is negative, if the graph goes down, or if it opens up? Down. It opens down. You're right. So we know that the end behavior of this graph is going to be opening down, right? Does A, um, Keith, does A, is there any compression or stretching of A? No, Keith. Maybe I want to say Kevin. Maybe I want to say. What about him? Huh? I'm just, no. No, I'm just looking around. All right. Maybe I'll say yes. Huh? Yes, please. There's no compression or stretching, right? If you guys remember, remember when we graphed x squared? The table of values for x squared was over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, right? Since a is negative, we're simply just going to go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, right? Because a is 1, so it just follows that pattern. So you could easily just do over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you could easily just graph it like that. Then all you do is reflect those points over. All you do is reflect those points over, and you guys have your graph, right? However, if that doesn't make any sense to you, the over why is it over 1, down 1, I can explain it to you, but not for this. You can always, always, always go back to a table of values. And when you're creating a table of values, I tell you guys to choose points that are to the left or to the right of your axis of symmetry. Do you guys see why you don't always want to choose the points negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2? Right? The graph is over here. If you were to choose the points negative, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, the points are going to be way down there. It's not even going to look like a problem. So you want to choose points that are right next to the axis symmetry. I'll just do one as an example. I'll do, what if you plugged in f of 8? So that'd be negative 8 squared plus 18 times 8 minus 75. 8 squared is going to be 64 times negative 1 is negative 64. Um, 8, 80, that's going to be times 36, so that's going to be 116. And you will get, when you go ahead and combine those, 65, 70, you're going to get 5. Over there, so you go over 8 up 5, which is what I've already showed you. And if you want to find, yes? Remember, do you see your vertex path? Huh? Do you see your vertex like, under the axis of symmetry? Yes. Is that formula, is that the x value or the y value? Yes. So, so that's the x value, but you said the y value is 6, correct? Yes. Which is 9. Yeah. That's for x. Right. Okay. So you plug x into the equation to find y. Well, can you just use the y coordinate thing right there? Negative b over 2a to find y? Opposite of b divided by 2a. No, that's the x coordinate. How about the other one? That? Yeah. That's what it, this is saying plug in x. That, this is the value when you get when you plug in x. That's what's that saying. Plug in x to find y. Oh, I thought, I thought. That f of thing is basically saying plug in the x coordinates. All I want you guys to understand is when a is equal to 1, your transformations are very basic. Over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. Since it's negative, you're going over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. Over 3 would be down 9, nine right? You're, I'm just squaring the numbers in my head. Also remember, if there's a compression, if there is an A, like let's say A was 2, instead of going over 1, up 1, you'd go over 1, up 1 times 2, right? If A was 1 half, instead of going over 1, up 1, you'd go over 1, up 1 times 1 half. So it'd just be over 1, up 1 half. You're multiplying that A by the Y coordinate, um, your value. 
But in this case, again, guys, if you don't understand that, just pick values to the left or to the right, and you can go and graph. Is this vertex, when you guys look at this, is this vertex going to be the max or the min? Max. max. It's the highest value. So we could say that's a maximum. Now, we are going to go over domain and range later here, and I know the bell's about to ring. But the domain, again, guys, is the set of all x values. Is there any number that you guys could plug in? You can plug in any number in for x and find a y value, right? Yes. And you guys can also see that the graph continues to expand. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, or what we say is all real numbers. The range is the set of all y values. So we're thinking of y coordinates. How low does this graph go down? Infinity. Negative infinity. It's going down to negative infinity. And then what's the highest y coordinate it goes up to? Y coordinate. Six. Just remember range is y coordinates. So you'd write that as negative infinity to six. Okay? Oh wait, I forgot. Early release.